And as the days went on, it's like, oh, another orphan elephant killed by lions. Oh, another one. And so you start thinking, this isn't right. The, the, these, these lions usually don't eat elephants unless there's a poaching problem. That's certainly our experience from Northern Central African Republic. And then we find our first, you know, elephants. And, you know, back in those days, you'd find an elephant limping and you think, okay, and then you'd see the spear wound. But today in Chad, it's AK-47s, or the preferred gun there, um, kind of ironically, is the M14. And the M14 appeared in Chad um, when Ronald Reagan sent a huge load of small arms to Chad when, when we um, chased the Libyans out of Chad. They get all these M14s, and they love the M14s because it's a heavier round and it's a longer barrel. So all these poachers, if they have a choice between an AK or an M14, they, they take the, the M14. But we start seeing these guys and we're thinking, well, maybe they're wounded by, by guns. And then we start finding dead elephants with their tusks removed. And um, we do a second wet, uh, dry season survey, did one in 2005, where we counted 3,885 elephants in Zaku, a complete count. We repeated the exact same survey in 2006. We come up with 3,050 elephants. So we're like, wow, we lost 800 elephants. What happened? You know, I hope you like the slides. I haven't had time to look at them. And so I say to myself, we got to do a wet season survey here because 3,000 some elephants leaving the park with all these Arab horsemen um, surrounding this place we could well have a massacre going on here that no one knows about because 3,885, 3,050, we're pretty sure we got all the elephants, we're pretty sure our methodologies are good, we're not seeing many carcasses inside the park, probably outside the park in the wet season. So I go back in August of 2006, so not that long ago, and sure enough, pretty much on the first flight where those 20 elephants were that we saw right when they left the park um, in the dry season, or at the end of the dry season. We're flying along, and all of a sudden we see more carcasses. And I thought, that's not the same massacre site as the one we saw, but it was right next to it. You know, it was like, you're confused, but no, these carcasses are more recent. You know, they're like a month younger, and the flesh is still there, and it's two months after that other massacre. And then we're flying, we find another massacre, and then we find another massacre, and we find another massacre. We found over 100 carcasses in six different massacre sites, and we didn't really even scratch the surface, you know. But the bottom line, and I'll kind of stop talking because Dave is going to pull out the hook pretty soon, is that we all have to realize that one, People um, live on the natural world. We do not live on, on things that do not come from the earth. They all come from the earth. Everyone's survival is due to what we can get from the planet. If those systems are destroyed, then human livelihoods are going to be in jeopardy. When you look at what's unfolding in a place like Chad or southern Sudan or northeastern Democratic Republic of Congo or northern Central African Republic, there is a very um, close relationship between the natural resource base when humans become more numerous and more needy all of a sudden, you've got this um, potential for conflict and potential for people to be um, um, taking what others possess. And if you look at what's happening in um, this area where we've now lost 130,000 elephants and millions of, of antelope, and we see this crisis in Darfur where, where Arab horsemen are killing and raping and pillaging um, villages and by some people's accounts uh, committing genocide, 
they're on the move. They're now moving into the Central African Republic. They're moving into Eastern Chad, and people are seeing this thing spread. And yet the United Nations, as far as I'm concerned, has really not even identified the core problem. And, and it has a lot to do with the natural resource base. It has a lot to do with human ecology. And I think that, again, if, if um, the US government is going to be um, smart about how we try to um, you know, bring peace and democracy and all these ideals that we um, are supposed to represent, there's no way we're going to be able to do it if we don't consider um, the natural resource base and we don't consider human ecology. And I believe very strongly that if we would have acted 25 years ago when Richard and I literally, and we wrote a paper um, that I would love to, I asked Richard a few weeks ago about it. It's called Poaching and Anti-Poaching in the Manavo Gunda San Florese National Park. It was written in 1984, I think. It described this scenario almost to a T saying, we got to do something, because if we don't, this is not going to stop with wildlife. And, and sure enough, here we are with Darfur, spending tens of billions of dollars. And that problem is not being solved at all. So uh, I think that it's never too late. And if we don't act now, um, what's happening in Darfur is going to happen in Chad. It's going to happen in the Central African Republic. And that, and that process that was stopped in 1900 and it's on the move again, is just going to continue. So I think that we have to be much smarter in the way we um, act. Thank you.